Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at solving exponential equations. Now, one property that we're going to see used as we're trying to solve exponential equations is the one-to-one -one property. And the one-to-one -one property says, if b to the power of u is equal to b to the power of v, then because those base values are the same, then what we can do is actually ignore those bases and just look at those powers being equal to each other. So we would say that u has to equal v. So for example, if we were looking at something like 2 to the x equals 32. I'm looking at a base of 2 on the left hand side. In our 1 to 1 property, we have to have the same base on each side of our equation. So we should be thinking about trying to rewrite that 32 as 2 being raised to some power. And I know that 32 is 2 to the fifth power. So I could replace that 32 on the right hand side with 2 to the fifth power. And then because we have like-based exponentials on each side, then the one-to-one -one property says that we can ignore those bases and just make an equation out of the powers. So then x would have to equal 5. Now in this example, we've got 20 times 1 half being raised to the power x over 3, and all of that is equal to 5. So what we're going to do is try to use our one-to-one -one property. But in order to do so, we have to have a like-based exponential on each side of our equation. So the first thing I need to work on is getting that exponential on the left-hand side all by itself. So I'm going to divide that 20 over to the right-hand side. Now when I divide that 20 over to the right-hand side, this fraction reduces down to 1 fourth. Now what we're going to try to do, we have a base of 1 half on the left-hand side. So we need to try to think of a power of 1 half that would get us 1 fourth as the answer. So we're actually going to take that 1 fourth and we're going to replace it with 1 half squared. So our equation will say 1 half to the power of x over 3 is equal to 1 half squared. And then because we have like bases on each side of our equation, we can ignore those bases and just look at the powers. So then x over 3 would have to equal 2. Now to get x alone, I'm going to take that divided by 3 and I'm going to multiply that 3 over to the other side. So we're going to end up with an x value of 6. Now not every exponential equation can be solved by using the one-to-one -one property. For example, if we add something like e to the x equals 5. There's not a way for us to rewrite the right-hand side as e being raised to some nice power. So we actually have to use a different strategy here. Now exponential and logarithmic equations are very much related to each other. And we can actually convert back and forth between logarithms and exponentials. So if we add something like log base b of x equals y, we can actually take that and turn that into an exponential equation that says b to the y equals x. But what I'm going to do in this case is actually take this equation and turn it back into logarithmic form. So what would happen here is this would become log base e of 5 equals x. But log base e is just the natural log. So this is the natural log of 5 equals x. Now in this equation, we're looking at e to the 2x minus 3e to the x plus 2 equals 0. And we're going to try to solve this. But we're going to have to use a different algebraic strategy this time. This equation actually looks sort of like a quadratic. I'm going to take that first term in there, e to the 2x, and I'm going to do a little rewriting. Properties of exponents say that if you have a power raised to another power, then that turns into multiplication. So we can actually work that backwards to rewrite this first term as e to the x squared. Because if we multiplied that 2 and the x together, we would get e to the 2x. Then I'm going to make this minus 3e to the x plus 2 equals 0. Now what I'm going to do in here is actually a little bit of algebraic substitution. And I'm going to introduce another variable, and I'm just going to call it w. And I'm going to let w equal e to the x. So then what I can do in my equation is I can replace those e to the x's with this w variable. So this would say w squared minus 3w plus 2 equals 0. And doing that substitution just makes this equation a little bit easier to look at for now. So what I'm going to do with this is, this is actually a factorable quadratic. I can factor this into w minus 2 and w minus 1 equals 0. So then what I would do is I would take each one of these factors and set it equal to 0. So I would get w minus 2 equals 0 and w minus 1 equals 0. 
In this first one, I could add that 2 over to the right-hand side, so this would say w equals 2. And on this other one, I could add that 1 over to the right-hand side, so this would say w equals 1. But then I have to remember that these w's actually represented something. w represented e to the x. So I have to take that e to the x and plug it back in. So this is going to say e to the x equals 2 and e to the x equals 1. So I'm not done solving yet. What I have to do with these is take and turn them into logarithms. So this first one is actually going to turn into the natural log of 2 equals x. And this bottom one will turn into the natural log of 1 equals x. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.